Hi, I'm Blackbright and I'm here to address any concerns you may have. If there's anything you're worried about and you need me to do a video on it, just send an email to blackbrightnews at gmail.com. The spelling of it is at the bottom underneath the description and I'll do that video on for you. I know some things are quite difficult and quite complex, so that's why I'm here, really to make your life easier because I appreciate how complex some of these things are. Anyway, someone asked me to do, answer their questions on driving offences, especially in relation to whether or not it's going to affect their indefinite leave to remain application. So I found this um, website, um, it's WM Immigration, and I've taken some information from them and I'm going to read it out to you because I don't, this isn't an area I'm familiar with. So bear with me, no eye contact. Um, how will traffic offences show up on my criminal record? The answer, it depends on the type of offence you receive. The general rule is if you go to court, then it will be on a record somewhere. If you only receive a fine, such as a fixed penalty notice, then this will not show up, providing you pay and don't go to court. It is worth noting that most traffic offences that go to court will not show up on a police report you apply for or see such as Police National Computer, PNC. This is because the police reports are the typical standard or general reports that only includes more serious crimes. To show any traffic offences such as caught with no insurance or careless driver, careless driving, then the organisation checking your criminal records would have to obtain an extended police record. If you, if you have any serious driving offences on your record, it can cause an issue with your good character requirement for the British citizen application. So basically, um, if you've done something serious, um, anyone who wants to know about that is going to have to apply for an extended police record. You know, like if you're going to go and work for the government or a nursery or something like that, they, they're the ones, or if your job depends on driving, they're the ones who pay extra for that extended police record. So it will show up then, but not basic. I don't think the basic stuff, according to this, will show up. Um, these are usually only obtained in circumstances where an employer needs to check an employee. An example would be if someone applies to work in a hospital or in a nursery, the employer would obtain an ex extended record of your history to ensure there is nothing that could be an issue. So the short answer is that even an offence that goes to court will not show up on most records that are used for the purposes of immigration, like an ILR application. In saying that, it is advisable to disclose all incidences where you have been to court or if you're expecting to go to court. Leaving this information out can cause many problems due to deception or failing to declare vital information on your ILR application. So that's one, um, one question. Another one is... When is a traffic offence considered spent? Most minor road traffic offences will stay on your driving record for four years. More serious driving offences will stay on your record longer. It is important to understand that driving record and how the Home Office perceives driving offences is different. Another question. I went to court. Will I be refused indefinite leave to remain? The answer, it depends on the nature of the offence. Generally, there is a 24 month wait until you would be eligible to apply for ILR. You would therefore have to extend your visa until you qualified for ILR. This may not be possible if you are on a tier one general visa. Now, now that has the extension route is closed. For these visa holders, it is best to consider switching to a tier two general. Have your spouse obtain a tier two general and switch in country as is allowed to their dependent. Mm, that sounds a bit complicated, but I think basically what they're saying is that um, if you went to court, 
depending on the nature of offence. Generally, there is a 24-month wait until you would be eligible to apply for indefinite leave to remain. That means you'd have to extend your visa if you've made that mistake until you qualify for indefinite leave to remain. So it's clean. This may not be possible if you're a tier one general visa. Now that extension route is closed. So they're not doing those extensions on the tier one. So what they're suggesting, this is WM immigration, is that you switch to a tier two general. I mean, all this switching and all this stuff, you know, it's very, very tricky. So, um, yeah. Anyway, another question. I received a fixed penalty notice, FPN. How will this affect my ILR application? They've said, uh, a quote from the Home Office guidance for their staff in regards to ILR and fines in quotes, receiving one does not form part of a person's criminal record as there is no admission of guilt. You must, disre you must disregard them for the purpose of checking if they amount to a conviction for an offence. Uh -huh. Receiving one does not form part of a person's criminal record as there is no admission of guilt. You must disregard them for the purpose of checking if they amount to a conviction for an offence. The only issue where a fine can become an issue is if you fail to pay it. So I guess what they're really saying is that, that if you get one of those um, fixed penalty notices, they're not considered an issue. As long as you've paid the fine and, you know, there's no outstanding money owing on it. Like I said, you know, they're always saying it's wise to disclose it, but technically it shouldn't really affect you, even though in some cases, depending on the tolerance or leniency of the caseworker, it may well do. Today might be your lucky day. Um, another question. I'm extending my visa. Will I be refused for a traffic offence? You will not be refused for fixed penalty notices or similar speeding fines that don't go to court. Even when an offence goes to court and you are convicted, your application will likely not be refused as the Home Office grounds for refusal do not warrant a refusal at this stage. Unless the crime is of a very serious nature. It is only when you apply for ILR that your convictions will be considered as a way for grounds of refusal. Oh, so what they're saying is that if you just want to extend a visa, it's not a big issue. But if you're going down the ILR route, it will be, especially if it's serious. Should I challenge a police officer's decision in court for a speeding for speeding or should I take the fine? I wouldn't challenge any police officer myself but uh, you may feel you're in the right and that the police officer has made poor judgment. Although morally it may feel right to challenge their decision, the fact is most times a judge will side with the police officer. The problem with challenging a police officer's decision is that it has to go to court and a judge decides. This then means you will have a court conviction on your record and, and it changes your initial simple fine to a fine in court and ultimately causing you lots of hassle with your immigration in the future. In the end, paying a fine of £60 and taking a few penalty points on your licence is safer than getting your ILR refused or having to pay to an extent your leave until 24 months has passed. Another question. I read someone was successful applying for ILR with a traffic offence in court. Will I be okay? Not all applications are equal and not all decisions follow the same strict guidelines. You should declare all convictions given in court on your application, even if it doesn't show on your record. Some people may, cho may choose not to provide this information in the hope that the caseworker will not see a small fine in the court on the PNC. This may be so. 
but if you fail to declare what is asked and you are refused, it can cost you a lot of money. You may find yourself in trouble with the Home Office also for not declaring information on your traffic offences. That should have been. That should have been. Also, if someone is successful at ILR when they don't declare convictions, they may be found out during the British citizenship application, and that will cause problems of deception and misrepresentation. Okay, what are the most common traffic offences that could affect your indefinite leave to remain application status? Okay, CD10, driving without due care and attention. AC10, failing to stop after an accident. CU10, using a vehicle with defective brakes. CU30, using a vehicle with defective tyres. IN10, using a vehicle uninsured against third party risks. SP20, exceeding speed limit for type of vehicle, excluding goods or passenger vehicles. SP30, exceeding statutory speed limit on a public road. SP50, exceeding speed limit on a motorway. TS10, Failing to comply with traffic light signals. Breaking a red light. These codes will stay on a driving record for four years from the date of the offence. Other codes that could affect ILR eligibility can be found here and may stay on your driving record longer. Remember that driving record is different from criminal records, which is a different from an immigration rule requirement. Note that how the rules are interpreted may vary based on your individual circumstances. And what they say is these frequently answered questions are only meant as a guide to common questions relating to having a traffic offence and are concerned about applying for ILR. If you are in doubt, make sure you check all policy guidance and immigration rules or contact us, that is wmimmigration.com for assistance in preparing your ILR application. So I hope that is useful for you. In other words, it's not really, well, like I said, it's the luck of the draw. So technically, for minor offences, it shouldn't really affect your ILR application, but it could, depending on whether or not someone's having a bad day. And that's all for now. Hope you found it helpful. And don't forget, if you need any information about anything to do with immigration or deportation, anything generally that you want to find out that's a bit complicated, just send me an email, blackbrightnews at gmail.com. It's at the bottom of the description and I'll see what I can do for you. And that's all for now. Bye bye.